Hi, Joan. She doesn't, she doesn't know that she's um, oh, that's her, that's her friend. on yeah, the phone. She can't really hear us. God. It is all good. Candy, all good. can you hear us, Candy? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Hey, okay, well, we're, getting ready, you. we're getting ready to go live. So you got to just okay. wait until they fix it. Okay. We're already live. Yeah, we are live. Kathy. So, hey, you guys, happy Friday. We are here to Woo! celebrate Kathy Davis and her book, Miracles, which has an incredible story of Kathy, and we're going to learn all about it. But we are also celebrating the fact that it is no. this week, Kathy. You did let me know that it was, I believe it's your 23rd year being cancer free. 23 right? years being cancer free. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Incredible. I can't Hi, wait to hear about your journey and your story behind Miracle. I don't know how to go and back. So, with all that uh, being said, okay, I am going to kick right it now. to you because Stop. I know that we have. Family and friends on, and so I would love to and be introduced and meet them. So, where do you want to start first? Take us on this family journey that you have. Okay. So, Kathy, why don't you just introduce the people uh, and if and let everybody that wants to say a couple of sentences or a minute or two or whatever. So, you start um, by by who you want to introduce the one, and then we'll let them have have a say. Okay. Uh, my husband George is trying to get candy. <laughs> I will go to Candace my for... son Merritt, and uh, yeah, this yeah. is my oldest son, a person I can always count on, and um, he's, you know, he's very much so in the book, so you'll have to read it. Everyone will have to get a copy and read it, because you will so enjoy it. Okay, Merritt, it's up to you now. <laughs> Merritt, so Merritt, we're going to have each one of you just introduce yourself and say a couple of a couple of words. Hey, Carrie, that's Hi, my Carrie. daughter-in-law. Well, great. This is our <laughs> I'm Merritt. I'm I'm Kathy's eldest son, and uh, this is my wife, Carrie. Hi. So, uh, we're excited about this launch uh, call today, and you know, so proud of my mother and all of her accomplishments with this book. She worked very hard to share her story in order to bring uh, hope and inspiration to other women that are going through the same. Um, same same thing that that she, she did, and uh, I can tell you it wasn't easy. Um, but she stayed positive. She stayed in the moment, and 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 stayed uh, with her belief in God. And she came out the other end stronger, happier, and uh, I think uh, and, and has lived a more fulfilled life after having had cancer and, and, and all that she went through. So um, again, a wonderful book, a wonderful story of 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 dealing with a very difficult situation, but coming out so much stronger. That's awesome, Merritt. Thank you very much for saying that. And um, Kathy, where to from Merritt? Your well, that's my, that's my daughter-in-law, Carrie. She's my eldest son's wife. She's been in Hi. our family since she was 20 years old. She's only 26 now, but, she, <laughs> <laughs> but she's been in our family a long time. And this is my granddaughter, Reagan, my first granddaughter. I'm a first grade <laughs> child, and um, so and so. Do you guys want to say to something Carrie. about the book, or or just say uh, say a hello? Okay, hey, I'm well. I'm Carrie, and um, it's uh, it it's been a, a journey to watch her go through uh, well, really everything she's been through since I was probably yeah. So I met Mary when I was twenty. Um, I remember it was Joanna was graduating from high school. Um, when she was diagnosed, and uh, and it's been, I mean, it's it's been a whirlwind of years. But she has always um, been so positive through the whole thing, all of it from the from the very very beginning. And then um, even with you know being steadfast in writing her book, and uh, and just been an inspiration to so many people, including us. So yeah. Thank you. And how about the granddaughter? Did she want to say something? Um, uh, <laughs> I read you were with me a lot while I wrote that book. I had to put her out on the spot. Poor thing. I'm so sorry you put on the spot. Well, I was with her a lot when she wrote it. Uh, yes. You would write really early in the morning, I remember. Yes. Oh, okay. And early in the wee hours of the morning, you mean? Yeah, yes. yeah. You, you would be up to like three o'clock in the morning. And I would be just eating like just random marshmallows and goldfish and stuff. And I would just sit in there while you would tell me all of your stories and everything. And I remember just like looking 
up to you. Like you are always the most faithful person I've ever met. And I've gone to a Christian school my entire life. And I always just thought you were so amazing. And it was insane how faithful you were. And I always looked up to you because of that. Oh, wow. that is so sweet, honey. Thank That's a you. lot to live up to, huh, Kathy? Yes. <laughs> and then there's my, and, and th thank you, honey, so much. And then that's my grandson, my only grandson, my favorite grandson, Drake. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice when you can say that. <laughs> yes, I love that. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. So anyway, well, Drake, what do you have to say? What do you think about this book coming out and being coming a bestseller on Amazon and its ebook? What do you think about all that work I did? Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm pretty excited. Uh, yeah. I, I remember sitting in uh, your office while you were like uh, making it and stuff and just listening to it. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm pretty excited. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, that's my legacy to you kids. You kids, it's now in the Library of Congress and you kids will be able to, you know, for your generation, the next generation, you'll always have that, that you'll have my book that your grandmother wrote a book that was a bestseller and that helped a lot of people. So Sandy, you want me to move on to my next son? Yes, please, please. Okay, please my next that. son is Blake and this is his family. And he has his wife there with his three children. His, our new little addition is Blakely. We just love her to pieces, she's so cute. But anyway, I'll let you go from there, Blake. Okay. I love that Thank name. The I love that your name is Blake and hers is Blakely. I mean, yeah. that is too cool. <laughs> I was kind of against it. They talked me into it. So. <laughs> Actually, me, me and mom <laughs> talked them into it. We did, didn't we, Lindley? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like my mother said, I'm Blake. I'm the middle child. Um, this is my wife, Andrea. Our newest addition, Blakely. My my daughter, Bryn, and my oldest, Lindley. So. Um, I just want to say, you know, kind of piggybacking off what my brother and everybody else already said, you know, very proud of my mom. This has been a long journey. Um, what she went through in that time was a scary time um, for everyone in our family. Uh, if you have, if you have read the book or haven't read the book, there's a part in there. And I can remember like it was yesterday, my mom and I having that tough conversation at the table. Uh, because I was very concerned about losing my mother. So um, very proud of you, mom. Congratulations. All Thank your hard you. work paid off, your perseverance. I'm very proud of you and love you very much. Thank you, sweetie. Yes, and we are so excited. Just got the new copy of the mail. <laughs> Yay! We are so, so proud of Ma. We just love her so much. She is such an inspiration and has been such to me has been an inspiration to me and a prayer warrior for me. And I'm so grateful that she's my mother in love. And all this book is just, as you guys all know, is a page turner. You just can't even put it down. And I've given it out to so many people and I can't wait to give it to more people to bring them hope. Um, and I'm just so, so proud, so proud. And the fact that this is a legacy that she's given um, for Gen and generational blessings that she's passing down to her, her children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. Um, it's just, it's wonderful. And we're so, so proud of you, Ma. We love you so Thank much. You. Thank you. I love you all too. Oh, now the that little the girl, the back, the girl in the look. back is my Lindley Lil. So she Lindley wants to, Lindley wants to say something. Sure. Absolutely. Well, yeah, Brittany wants to say something too. Good. I love it. Uh, I was with Ma a lot when I was younger as a baby, and I always remember her staying up till like three in the morning writing it. And I always remember just dancing to Poker Face when she would take breaks. <laughs> yeah. So that's our that's, song, right, Lindley? Yes, that's really what I remember dancing to um, uh, Lady Gaga and stuff like that <laughs> on all of her breaks. And I, got to witness all the hard work she put into it. And I went to all of her cancer events um, at high school, at high schools and stuff like that. So I'm very Peaches, proud of yep. you, Mom. 
I love you hey, too, Gaga, sweetheart. Gaga fan, what is your favorite song? <laughs> I've been to two of her concerts. That's like my person. Oh, okay. <laughs> poker face. We love poker, poker face. face. That is a good one. That's a good yes. one. Okay. You want to say something, Brittany? No, I was going to say that. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got you to look at the camera. Go so ahead, Brittany. Go ahead. I'd love to hear from you. I was going to say that when Ma tells me all those hard stories, I haven't seen it in person, but I can probably imagine that it's really hard. And that's yeah. all I want to say. Oh. Can you tell her you love her and so you're proud? And that's awesome. So that sweet, awesome. Brenny. Yes. Thank you. And Ma, you have one other grandson. It's Gronk. Oh, yeah, that's Hi. right. Gronky boy. <laughs> <laughs> Blake's dog. I love him. There he's <laughs> <not right> there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that now okay, I move uh, on. Now, now George is here, so I'll let him speak. My husband, George. George, have his turn. Yes. George, you need to unmute yourself and then. Are you there, George? Stephen, hi, how are you? I just, unmu I just unmuted. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Can we hear you now? You're yes. on now, honey. I'm, I'm going to say. Sure. For Kathy and I, we've been married over 52 years. Wow. Dated for five years before that, so it's almost been 60 years. And she will never, ever, ever fail to, to uh, astonish me in the things that she does. Uh, I learned over the decades, or half a century, that if she says she's going to do something, she'll do it. Uh, and I would recommend don't get in the way. Um, you know, I am a firm believer in that myself after just working with her for a short time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she is. Uh, uh, and I, I can say her, what she did with her and the way she addressed the, the breast cancer when she came was diagnosed uh, and was not given a very good prognosis. Uh, she simply looked at the doctors who were all big Boston experts and the, the leaders in the field, and she says, I'm going to be healed. I'm going to do fine. And uh, they kind of, well, I know Mrs. Davis, and it's good to have a good attitude, but you do have to be a little bit realistic. And I just sat there and said, these guys don't know who she's talking to. <laughs> I mean, they, she says she's going to be healed. She'll be healed. And she has. <clears throat> she said she's going to write a book, and she has. She said she was going to try to get that book published on a big New York publisher, and she has. And I don't know what more she can do, but I, I will not be surprised on anything that that woman can do if she puts her mind to it. So I love you, babe. You did a great job. And I'm, I'm here to support all the way. Love you too, honey. That was beautiful. Thank That's you beautiful. so that was, much. That was George. So now I'll go to my daughter, my daughter, Joanna. She she was um, oh look at Joanna's puppy. She was oh, her puppy is so adorable. It's not funny. <laughs> hey Grant. It's hey funny. Katie, how are you? She's got, her best, friend. Are you She's got her best friend from college <laughs> there, and then her friend Jen. Nice no. to see you, Jen. Hi. And other grandbaby butters and Grant. Uh, yes, that's my grand doggy. So what does Butters have to say to me? What does he have to say? <laughs> He's like congratulations, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, how cute um, he is. a little a, a cute story about my daughter is that, you know, I started out writing my book, I was writing it by pen and paper. And she would always faithfully come down on Sundays, and I would look at her and go, Joanna, could you just because I didn't know how to type then. And I already I, I had whenever I worked, I had a secretary, so I didn't know how to type. So I'd say, Joanna, do you think you could type a few pages? She'd go, Mom, I've worked all week. I'd go, please, honey, just a few. And I'd make her a favorite meal. Could you just do a few pages? So she would type a few pages. And it just helped me so much getting the book that I had written in a notebook, most of it, a lot of it, onto, onto the computer. So that helped me tremendously. So I really appreciate that. I really appreciate my daughter's proud in that. Yeah, so I just want to say congratulations. So proud of you. Excited to read the new copy and all of the new Good. verses that are in here and um, proud to be part of it with you. Um, luckily, I didn't have to stay up until 3 a.m. to write, but sometimes <laughs> it was late and I'm the morning person in the family. So, but we made it through and so proud of you and uh, can't wait to see what happens next. Well, that's wonderful, honey. Thank you so much. Hey, Grant. Hi, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. This is Joanna's significant other, and we love him. <laughs> love he made a good too. choice. 
Oh, thank you, honey. That's and then awesome. Katie that's and Jen, awesome. it's so nice to it's so nice to see them here. Thanks, and Joanna, Joanna has. I, how long has it been since you've seen Katie, Joanna? Uh, years, I think. Yeah, two, yeah, two, because years, of COVID years. and everything. So she just yeah. they just came in this weekend. Joanna now lives on the beach in Virginia Beach, and she's loving every minute of it. And oh wow! We're all gonna we're all gonna be seeing her. Well, she we just saw her the other day, but we'll be seeing her again in about a week. Yep. Yeah, so exciting. then you want me to go on to other people, right? Yes, yes. Okay, However, so then, whatever order you want to go. Okay, um, my, this is my cousin Brenda. On I don't know how you're seeing everybody, so I'm not sure. This is my cousin Brenda. Hi. And, hey, Brenda. And Brenda, Hi, everybody. Hi. And Brenda was very much a part of me writing the, she was very much a part of my miracle. She believed in it. She had, Brenda. Brenda is a teacher. And she was teaching at that time and she would have her whole class send me letters. She would have them all write letters. And how, what grade was it, Brenda? That was kindergarten. Kindergarten and they would write little notes and they, she would make all kind of creative things and she'd put them in the mail. And believe it or not, those things really make you feel good when you're going through cancer. Oh, treatment. yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So anyway, she is a dear, dear one to me and, um, her mother and my mother were like sisters. They were, they had only brothers. And so they became extremely, extremely close. And um, because of that, you know, we, Brenda, even though she's much younger than me, only by a couple of years. But anyway, <laughs> we became very close too, because every time I would come home in the summer, her mother would call me and say, now, when are you coming home? Because Brenda wants to come home the same time so we can all be together. So Brenda and I had, instead of just growing up together, we developed a relationship when we were women, which was lovely. And she was there for me on that ride throughout my entire treatment and my healing and my miracle. And she has been there cheering for me and doing anything she could to support me. And I so appreciate it. Brenda, welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. And do you want to say a few words about the book sure. or about Kathy? Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. This is my husband, Stephen. Hi, Stephen. And not only were our mom's best friends, um, but Kathy's grandmother and ha her sister, Holly, their grandmother, if you can follow this, was my grandmother's sister. And right. their last name was Mackenzie. So we all call ourselves the Mackenzies. The Mackenzie clan. A few, a few it's read in the book. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And one thing about the Mackenzie family is that we we had a lot of miracles in our family. And what's exciting to me about this book that Kathy has written is that when I read it, it's all true and it's all stories I remember uh, Kathy telling when she was a young teen and I was a teenager and a little girl. And now it's all come to fruition. And her sharing these stories, we're all very hopeful that others' families can experience the same type of miracles that our family has. I definitely and, think a strong support system like you've had, Kathy, obviously, yes, uh, absolutely. is very crucial. Yes. Well, so For sure. I, I love that. And Kathy, I know that we have some people we haven't introduced yet, and I, I want to make sure that we introduce them and get and get to meet them. But I would love to know some of the backstory that went into creating miracles. I guess one of the biggest questions that I have that I would love for you to answer is why did you pick the title Miracles with a Y, first off? Well, it happened to be that um, I wanted to name my book Divine Intervention. That was the name of my book. And of course, because I had had a divine intervention with an aggressive stage three cancer, breast cancer that they gave me no hope for. So I definitely, as soon as God spoke to me that day on the CAT scan table in Boston, I knew I was going, to, I, it, it, the phrase came into my head. Yes, it's divine intervention. I'm going to name my book that. But then, um, you know, uh, it was in 2001, I wanted to make sure that I had uh, they were going to do personalized breast cancer license plates in Virginia. And my husband and I were posed at the computer, ready to put in there miracles and the way it's normally spelled. But it was, you know, too many letters with the pink ribbon there. So I had, we had to rethink it. And my husband and I sat there and he came up with the brainchild of miracles, M-Y-R-C-L-E-S. And that was so great. So 
Um, my book is spelled My Miracles. I thought that was, I mean, the Miracles was my license plate for many years. I wrote around on it. And it was That's like good. My Miracles, Your Miracles. It was, it was really food for thought. It caused a lot of, um, a lot of conversation when it was in the parking lot, a lot of <laughs> conversation when I was riding down the street, people would beat their horn, give me a thumbs up because it had the pink ribbon there. Uh-huh. So anyway, um, it came to the end and I was getting ready to name the book, couldn't name it Divine Intervention. So, you know, I didn't know what to do because my husband said Divine Intervention, it's gonna be, there's so many people so many books out there in that field, it'll be a crowded field. Divine interventions everywhere. You won't be able to, and there's divine intervention seminars, divine intervention conventions. Even even if you name it that, it's gonna be lost in that field. So my son and I were talking, Blake and I were talking, and I said, Blake, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what I'm gonna name my book because I thought it was gonna be divine intervention. And he said, mom, I think you've been, I think you've been writing on that with that license plate, with that on your car for years. I know every time I follow you, I always think to myself, wow, my mother really had a miracle. And I went, really, Blake? And he said, yeah. He's No, I I knew he meant it, but I thought that should be the name of my book. And so I thought, hmm, that's interesting. And then George, who's not that type of person, but called me on the phone like a day later and said, honey, I don't know why, but it just came to me. You need to name your book. The license, your license plate, only you need to make it plural, miracles. So I named, and I thought, wow, two people in my family that I love came to me and told me the story. So that's how it came. And I thought it was good because that's how it came to be. And I thought it was good because it's my miracles, your miracles. We all have them. They all ha- happen to all of us. It's not just me, but we just, a lot, of, a lot of times we don't recognize them because they may be small ones. So that's how the name Miracles came to be. That is exciting. That is very exciting. Yeah. And I'd like to just, I'd like to just add on, on that, that of course, that divine intervention never went out of my mind. And so it bothered me that I didn't get to put divine intervention on as my title. So when the, my uh, New York City publisher picked it up, they called me and they had a meeting with me and they said, you know, they said, um, you know, it was a big Zoom meeting and the publisher was there. The president is actually the one that found my book, but the publisher was there. And he said to me, Kathy, we've all read this book. We all love it. You know, the team has read it, but we want you to tell us in your own words, you know, can you tell us about the book and, you know, why you named it, you know, Miracles. We love that name. It's going to, you know, people are going to take a second look on the shelves and that when they see it. And I said, well, actually his name's Jim. I said, actually, Jim, I wanted to name it Divine Intervention. And then I went on to the story I just stated with you. And it wasn't but a few minutes later, he all of a sudden said, you know what, Kathy, I see it now. He says, I see miracles, but I also see the subtitle should be a true story of divine intervention, hope and inspiration. And I'm telling you, I got goosebumps all over my body. I was like, wow, here it is, full circle, Lord. It's what I thought it should be named, Divine Intervention. And now it's going to be the subtitle of my book. Nice. So how did the you know, whole process of writing your book, you know, because you're I I would like to think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Kathy, but it was kind of therapeutic to get, you know, your whole journey through, you know, the stage three aggressive breast cancer that you had, but all the other miracles that have happened in your whole life. So yes. was it was it, did you find it difficult to write your book? Was there, you know, difficult moments in there? How was the whole process for you? No, it was, it was not difficult. It was difficult. It may have been difficult in the fact that I've always been a storyteller, as you can see, and I've always been able to tell a good story, but turning your storytelling ability into writing a book that a reader can get and enjoy is totally different. So I never took any classes or any courses. I just decided that I was going to do it as God told me to do. So I sat down and I started doing it. And the more I did it, the more I liked it. The the more that I wrote, the more I felt, oh, I'm I'm doing this. I'm making this happen. And then, you know, my first chapter came out and and then I knew that I could do another one. And it it was a lot of work, but I was so excited to do it. And, um, I wanted to accomplish, you know, God gave me a miracle and 
he told me, uh, and when I was in Boston and they told me that there was no hope to be had and that, you know, I was to get my affairs in order and maybe I could live, maybe I could live 18 to two years. And my sister Holly will attest to that because she was with me through it all. And they said, you know, maybe you can, but I, when God spoke to me on that CAT scan table, as I laid there and the droning of the CAT scan machine was at, the, at my feet and the big black clock on the wall was ticking away the seconds. And I was praying for my life. Please, Lord, just let me be able to raise my children. Please let me be able to be with my husband. And the more I was pleading with God and talking to him, all of a sudden, just as God had done when I was a child suffering from severe asthma, he came in. My prayer went way off into the distance. And God spoke to me like he'd done when I was a child suffering with asthma. And he told me, made me know that right then and there, it was a knowing that I was going to be fine, but that one day I was going to go on and write a book of hope and inspiration that would help countless others. And I knew right then and there that I was going to be fine. And that's what I was going to do. So that's a little background on it. See, and I love that, Kathy, because for me, I feel like we don't hear enough about, you know, the miracles that, that God does and how he impacts our everyday lives, yes. you know? And so I found that in your book and just talking to you in the month that I've gotten to know you and just talking to you and, and hearing your stories, I feel like this book is very much needed and what people need today, you know, with society and the way that, you know, things are, I feel like this is much needed, but I find it. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have breast cancer or anything, but I find it, it was comforting for me. You know, I, I found, I found comfort in reading your book. And so I can only imagine the impact that you can make in that, you know, circle and the people that are going through the same things that you went through and any part of the journey. So, you know, I am, am not envious, but I am very grateful that you wrote this book and that you're getting your story out there and that God had you write it. And I'm very happy about your publisher. So I would love to hear the story about how you got a New York publisher. I mean, I am in awe of that. That is amazing. Well, you know, the, the funny part about it is, is that the book is really, it's, it is, there is the breast cancer story within the book, but it is, it is the breast cancer story within the pages of the book, but really it is a story of faith. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole book is about faith. That's really what it's all about. So, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't known by anyone. I wasn't a movie star. And so what was I going to do? How was I going to get my book out there? So I knew what I would do is I would self-publish and I would get it out there. And I knew self-publishing it, someone was going to pick it up. And one day I get a call from somebody and they said, you know, you, this uh, publisher is looking for Christian stories. You should submit it. So I submitted my story. And the president of the company contacted me right away. And I, I was shocked because the president calling me of the company. And he said, Kathy, we, our team loves this book. We want this book. And he went on and on to tell me, he said, I see it everywhere. I see it helping, helping so many people. But then it was the fact that, um, you know, I was, I was just, you know, in, in awe of the whole thing that he, you know, was contacting me that he wanted my book and so forth. And then he said to me, you know how I found this book? You know how I really got into this book? And I said, well, no, I don't. And he said, he said, I, we get, we get manuscripts all the time. You know how I got this, found this book is because my wife just went through breast cancer treatment and she's out about six months now. And she still has that She's very spiritual. She's very faithful too, but she has that fear, you know? And, you know, I was just talking to my sister last night. The biggest, one of the biggest phrases in the Bible is fear not. It is in the Bible 365 days, 365 times, but 365 days of our lives. So, you know, fear not. And um, he, he said, I, my wife read it and she loved it and it gave her so much hope. We wanted to give lots of hope to other women. So that's how it all came to be, Amy. Nice. Yeah, I love that. I could ask you that question. And I find that I get a similar answer every time. And every time it's about faith. And I feel like that is 
just amazing. I mean, we don't hear enough about it. And so it's like I said, I mean, I'm in awe of you, Kathy. This is amazing. The book that you have out, your family being on. I know we have some new people that joined us. So Kathy, you want to introduce us to some more of your family? Yes, friends? yes. I'll go. I'll continue. I'm going to go to my sister, Holly. Now, this is this, this is sort of like, uh, <laughs> just like George said, <laughs> the Hollywood squares. <laughs> I'm going to go to my sister, Holly. Now, this is my sister. And she and I went on this journey together, too. And uh, her husband was the CEO of a cancer research company at the time in Boston. He was only that he was the CEO of many companies, but only that just a little short time um, during the time I needed him. And I, I called my sister and she was on it. Her husband was away. She said, I am calling Rob right now. And she said, I'll call you back. And she called me back. She said, Rob is taking the first plane home and he will get you in with the best breast cancer team Boston has to offer. And she, they did just that. So that's you all. You're on, girl. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm glad to be with all of you tonight. Um, I just wanted to, it's, I'm, I'm a poem person. It's not my poem. It's an unknown author, but I felt that it went along with Kathy and just wanted to read it. I changed some of the things, but. She's a good writer too. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when things look bad, your emotions high, and you try to smile, but instead you sigh. When life is pressing you down a bit, rest of you must, but do not quit. Our journey takes us on twists and turns as countless know and others learn. And many a failure turns about when we might have won had we stuck it out. Don't give up through the pace, though the pace seems slow, you might succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. If only the struggler hadn't given up, he might have captured the victor's cup. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt. And you can never tell how close you are. It might be near when it seems so far. So stick to the fight when you're hardest hit. It's when things seem the worst that you must not quit. And so I just wanted to follow that up and pull it back Lovely. into Kathy because she inspires me because she is absolutely not a quit quitter. Her, her, her cancer could have caused her to quit, but no. She persevered and pressed forward, always seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, never feeling sorry for herself, always determined to make her day the best it could be, and forever a believer. And that's why she is here tonight with her new book, I'd say that's pretty inspiring. Thank you. Love you, sister. <laughs> so then I will go to, let me see, I'm going to look, I'm looking. Okay, then I'm going to go to my cousin, Candy. Oh, you get, you're not on. There's no audio, Candy. Sorry. And we had it before. I know that's a shame. I think she just has to unmute herself. She's just unmute muted. yourself, are, are Candy. You unmute? Try it. No, she's good. Candace, can you hear us? Hello. Yep, yeah, gotcha. Can you hear us, Candy? Yep. I can hear you, but I can't see you. But that's all right. <laughs> well, yeah, this I is my wanted... this is my this is my cousin Candy, who I love, and um, her mother uh, Brenda just talked about all the Mackenzie sisters. We're yeah. the Mackenzie clan. And all the Mackenzie sisters, her mother was uh, my grandmother's sister, just like Brenda's grandmother was uh, my grandmother's sister. So there you have that history about who they are. So go ahead, Candy. I'm so glad you're here today. Thanks, Kath. And I'm so proud of you with this wonderful, wonderful book. I hope everybody enjoys it as so much as much as I have enjoyed it. Uh, the times that you and I had had together as you were writing it and your mom was very ill and you still persevered through all of that and you 
been such an inspiration to everybody that's around you. And I just love you right to bits. And uh, I just hope everybody will enjoy this book as much as I have. And I have listened to it as you have written it. And, I, and I just love you right to bits. That's it. Take care and God bless. Love you too, honey. Okay, so now I'm gonna thank you, Candy. So now I'm gonna introduce my, my niece, my niece, Amy and her son, Isaac, who is my great niece, uh, great nephew, and I love that. So here they are, and Amy went through on the ride too. So there you go, Amy. What do you have to say, sweet girl? Yeah, hello everyone. I love all of you, and I'm so excited to be here with my aunt, who is absolutely amazing. And I promised her I wasn't gonna cry, so I'm not gonna cry. But she is the most amazing aunt, um, mother, daughter, sister, you name it. She is so positive, so inspiring. I remember as a young girl, it was the first person for me to remember still to, to this day, um, being scared of their life and um, her coming home because she wanted a second opinion at Boston. She was, she was going to make it. And those doctors did, did no, she was going to do it. And I remember it was the size of an orange and it was, we were all fearful. And I feel like we were more fearful than she was at times. She knew this was her purpose, that God was sending her down this path to reach others because of her, um, she, her positivity just radiates from her. It's, it's, it's a light that shines that is a rare light from someone. Um, she's always just, there could be a hundred negatives and one positive. She would focus on that one positive. And I remember as a little girl, you know, young girl, I shouldn't say little, but probably 13, 14, 15, going to her house in the summers and all night long, she would just be typing and typing away. And this was her calling. This was what was meant to be with God. And she has, I can't wait for other people to get a hold of this book and read it because the way that she has inspired me and helped me through my life with always remembering what my aunt would say or giving her a call for a positive word, an uplift. I just honestly, as you can tell, I'm just gushing over here. I can't say enough great things about this book. It is, it's her. It's what she was put here to do. This was her calling. She is an inspirational speaker. The first time I saw her speak, all of us saw her speak um, at a large gathering at a church. It was like, wow, this is what she was put on this earth to do. And I just can't encourage people enough to get a hold of this book. And, you know, it's, it doesn't matter whether you've experienced cancer or not. She just talks about so many life challenges that people face that isn't cancer, but that brings their life the same type of battle and just she's just amazing and this book is so touching and inspirational and uplifting and um yeah it was just it was a journey but she was I feel like I didn't worry as much as I probably would have because she was so this is fine I've got this this is what God has put me through I know I am meant to reach others with this and inspire and it was just like she did with everything. She took something terrible, what most people would find terrible and made it beautiful. And now Thank she's God. putting it into the book. Thank you, honey. That's so sweet. Thank yes. you, darling. Sammy, I mean you're it. Muted. You're muted, I mean Sammy. It. What do you need to say, Isaac, my sweet boy? You see all your other cousins here. 
Yeah, we're flipping through. It doesn't show me on the whole screen. It's weird. Oh, that's yeah, too bad. Like, there's Merritt and Carrie I see now. Yes. Yeah, there they are. All and right, then Blake is here with Lindley. And Kathy, I wanted to say one thing about what Amy had to say was, um, I, what I, one of the things I've learned, and I can tell that you have experienced this as well, but when we're going through something, as you were going through what you were, God doesn't give Amy the, the strength and everything she needs to go through what you're going through. He gives it to you. And I yes. love that. I think that's one of the, yes. I learned that lesson myself. And I think it's one of the most beautiful lessons that God has ever taught me is that he gives me the strength. And then through that strength, I, of course, share it with others. You shared it with your family and therefore encouraged your family and your family grew and your family, you know, the faith that your family yes. had. But you led the, you led the charge because God gave you everything you needed to go through what he was asking you to do. So I love that. And that was great, Amy, when you said that, to, to share yes. that, that was beautiful. Thank you, sweetie. It. Yes, and like I said, that's why I said I didn't mean to go on because I could go on forever about her. There isn't mm -hmm. enough, I can't say enough good things about her. Right. Um, above and beyond the call of duty with any position she takes in life. Thank you. And so it's a great story, great story. Yeah. I know, yes. Kathy, because I know you told me from the beginning there were yes, a one story in this book. A lot so. of stories in the book. Yes. A lot. So, how, yes. so Kathy, I want to ask you a question now. It's like, how, and, and this is from your discussion questions at the end. So I think that's beautiful that you have these questions at the end of the book. That was my help. sister Holly's idea. <laughs> oh, that's a great <laughs> idea. Great, Holly. Because And I did love that poem, by the way, Holly. Yes. But the question, and this is just great that everybody can then use this, not only the stories, but yes. the, the questions, you know, to help them. But I want the very first question you have was, how can the message assist you in finding your own purpose? So how do you think what you went through and the messages that you got, how did that help you to understand your purpose in life? And how can we use that to help us understand our purpose? Well, I think that God is always speaking to us. He's doing it through a message. He's whispering to us. He's showing us things that we, we see it, but we just think, is that our intuition? Is that my own thinking? We don't, we don't take it and run with it and say, you know, God, God gave me a message today. He wants me to do this, or he wants me to do that. And so I tell people to step out in faith. You know, when you, something comes to you, it's a God whisper. It's a God, it's a God wink. God's wanting you to do this. He's wanting you to do that. He's trying to take you down the right path. Step out in faith and believe that you can do it and go on with it. And so that's exactly what I did. And that's what I try to tell other people to do is I think that's how you can live your purpose. You, every one of us have a purpose here under the heavens. And we just have to step out and work on that and believe in it and believe we didn't think it up ourselves. It came to us from God. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for that. So who's next on our introductions? Okay, I'm looking. I'm going to see here. So I want to introduce my friend, Holly. She is a breast cancer survivor. Holly and I met at a very big charity function where um, many of the people that put on that charity function had read my book and they were highlighting it that day. And they had me stand up. And as a matter of fact, Tony was with me too. <laughs> Tony will tell that story in a little bit. But anyway, um, so they were highlighting my book. They had me stand up at the charity meeting and um, after everybody, that's the after the charity function was over, uh, we were. I was heading out, and Holly came up to me and said, "Oh my gosh, you're a survivor! You wrote this book. I'm going to get this book." And I still can remember it to this day because there was a set. Of, uh, there was a staircase to get out of this building that went up, and I looked up at the up at the top. The women were going very slowly out because there was a lot of people there that day, and Holly looked down at me, and she said we're going to get in touch. And I went, cause she had given me her number and I had given her mine. 
And she said, we're going to get in touch. And I went, absolutely, let's have lunch. And it was that type of a thing. And we became instant friends. And uh, so anyway, that's how I met Holly. And she's been with me on this ride with my book ever since. She's been so supportive and so helpful. So I will put give the um, mic, so to speak, over to Holly. Well, when I met Kathy and we met up for lunch, it was like we had known each other our whole lives. I mean, I, we still can't believe that we had just met. And we definitely have a strong bond. I'm a breast cancer survivor, seven years. Woohoo! My mother, my grandmother, my cousin have breast cancer. So um, it was just, it really felt wonderful for me to meet somebody else. I had an aggressive type two. And at the time I was in charge of the uh, support group at our local hospital. So I was all in for sure. Um, and it, we, we have just, we have such a crazy bond. I read that book in a few hours and then I, helped have a book club for her. I love reading and I talk it up to everybody. It, she's an amazing writer, but more than that, she just lives and breathes inspiration. My word behind me is believe. I'm a teacher, a fourth grade teacher, and that's my theme word. And it, that's what Kathy does. She believes in you. She believes that whatever you're going through will get better and that we all have a purpose in life. Um, uh, my favorite memory with her is one time we went out, a couple of us girlfriends, and we were in my driveway, and there was a song on, and Kathy, I don't remember what song it was, and we Worth it. It was called Worth It. On my right, Adri I, um, Adriana, what's her name? Grande. Ariana Grande. Grande. <laughs> Worth it. I still remember it. Yeah. Hey, you guys uh, are my kind of people. We got Lady Gaga. <laughs> <Black on laughs> and Evelyn, you guys are my people. And it was... <laughs> <laughs> it started to play. Yeah, go ahead, Holly. But I, I mean, love that's that Kathy Kathy the best is so positive and she's fun. Um, but she's also who you can turn to when you're going through a tough time. Um, and the poem from Holly was just perfect. So I'm so happy to celebrate Kathy um, and, and the way that she's going to help so many other people. It's, it's a wonderful book. And she's an amazing writer. I tell my class all the time, I know an author. <laughs> Thank you, so, Holly. So just, you know, believe and have hope. And Kathy, like, keep on keeping on because you're amazing. You inspire all of us. Thank you, sweetie. I appreciate that so much. So now I'll go to my friend, Tony. Tony and I met many years ago. We've been longtime friends. And um, Tony's been very supportive over my book. And she's been great with the whole thing. And I don't know how many she bought how many she gave to people, but she's been there all the way. So she's been on this ride too. Yeah, I've known Kathy for quite a long time and uh, been to more than one book signing and um, speaking engagements. And it's been exciting to see the different people in the audience touched um, by Kathy's inspiration and um, hearing her story and everything she's gone through and her positive um, ability to just move forward. Um, so all of those times have been quite enjoyable and um, it's so exciting, Kath, to see you finally getting to where you talked about being so, and able to reach out and touch so many people with your book. And it is a great read. And, um, and like you said, there are a lot of interesting stories within that book. And, um, and just your, your positive faith is such an inspiration as well. So. Yeah, well, Tony and I were talking today and I said to her, do you remember that first book signing? Like I said, my book's gonna get picked up by a publisher, Tony. And she was like, yeah, yeah. And then I said, and it's going to be a movie too one day. So I said, "Well, now we got the publisher. Now we got to get the movie going." <laughs> and I'm, going to, and I'm going to be played by Brad Pitt. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like, yeah, I like it. I can see that. I can, and who's I like going to play you, Kathy? I don't know. Um, you know, people I can remember. My friend used to say, um, "What's that one, George? That we always like the." Um, I'm trying to think of that. Um, she's an older actress now, but she's, Ooh, I'm trying to think of her name. I can't think of it. I can't think of it offhand, but I, I, I have, she was in the Meryl hand that Street. rocks the cradle. I, I think about Meryl Street. Not, well, yeah, people, many people Meryl have said, Street. 
many people have said Meryl Streep. Yes. Mm -hmm. I could see that. I could see it being a movie, Kathy. I mean, sky's the limit for you, girl. You know, I'm on with you. Huh? Whatever I can do, you know, I am here. Amy, okay. it's gonna, it's gonna happen. And as a matter <laughs> of fact, Amy had me doing a podcast that said, I want you to speak to this woman. And so this was about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, she's, you know, give her a call. She's a Christian. She's got about 700 radio, sta 600 radio stations. And she wants to talk to you about, you know, your book and this and that and see what you can do. I said, okay. So I contacted the lady. She was lovely. And we got into a big deep discussion. And Amy had already told me that she was a breast cancer survivor too. And so she said, you know, I'm a breast cancer survivor, right? And I said, I said, um, yes, Amy mentioned it to me. And she says, but you know, I still have that fear in me. And I, and she said, and I'm, I'm very devout Christian, but I still have it, you know, it comes into my mind from time to time. I said, well, you got to read my book, girl. <laughs> and so we laughed. And then she started telling me that she was in California and that her daughter, uh, was a was in the film industry and that she was in South Africa doing a documentary and she said you know my daughter's worked with some of the best um directors in 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 Hollywood I said oh I need to talk with you because I know my book's going to become a movie and she said oh I love that she said I'll be speaking to my daughter this week she says you never know what will come she says she's got a lot of contacts and I'll put you in touch with some of those people so you never know what's going to happen in life. But I say the book got out. The, the, now you've got the publisher. Now it's getting out. It became a, it became a national bestseller. On, it's an ebook in March. Now the sky's the limit. Who knows? Moving next. All of us at the premiere. How about that, yes, everybody? Yes, yes, absolutely. I love that. Yes. Well, yes. Of your book, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say, Amy? I couldn't hear you. Speaking of your book, Kathy, why don't we give away one autographed copy of your book right now, and then we can we can sure. finish reading the I've rest got of some your more people to and introduce and yes. do this big one. Okay, so you guys, if you haven't figured this out already, just from listening to me, I'm amused by little things, and so I have this thing called the Wheel of Names, and it spins around, it shoots fireworks, and it picks people's names. <laughs> I get all excited about it, so. Just ignore me if I'm over excited, but I love this thing and it makes me happy. So it's you go, Amy. In life, okay? do what you want to do. Little things in life. Okay, so we are going to spin it for a signed autograph copy of Kathy's book. And we have some more goodies coming in just a short while. So let's see who wins this one. Ooh, I, love this. I love this. It's so cute. Ooh, Ginger. See, fireworks, confetti. Oh, I love this. I love it. I do. I love that. You're my kind of girl. I'm telling you, you guys, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande, you <laughs> like my wheel of names? We are like long lost family. I'm just saying. I feel like we are connected, okay? There you go, time. Amy. <laughs> we are all connected. Well, but good. Con congratulations to Ginger for the signed copy of the yes, book. Yes, I will get all of her information. I'll send love it, it. You in, in an email. I'll have this all written down. But I know there's some more. A couple more yes. people that we need to meet. So yes. get this on the rest of the journey, Kathy. So the next person I'm going to introduce you is my dear friend, Ricky. Um, I met Ricky through Holly. Um, Holly, you know, right away, she's a, you know, you, you always, you know, it's birds of a feather. You meet people, you click immediately, and then you say, and then you run with it, you know? So I met Holly and she said, oh, you've got to come to my Bible study group. And then there's a whole bunch of women there and you'll meet them and they'll, they, you know, they would love to hear about a Christian book. So I said, okay. And so we went, there were a lot of women there and um, it happened to be a little while, a couple of months later, a lot of women there to meet and talk to and so forth and so on. We used to have a lunch, we'd bring salads and we'd eat things, we'd eat our lunches together, and then we'd consider, continue to study whatever we were studying. That particular year, we were studying David. And so um, one day, I sat down beside Ricky, and it happened to be Cinco de Mayo. And so after the Bible study was over, everybody was starting to leave, and it was like 3.30, 4 o'clock, and I looked over at Ricky. I said, you know, today's Cinco de Mayo. We should really go celebrate, because I love to celebrate life. 
So she said, and I do I'll too. go with you. And I don't even know that Ricky, Ricky doesn't usually drink, but she said, I'll go with you. So we went and we waited and waited because of course every restaurant was packed with people, but we went and we had the best time. And she said, you know what? She said, do you want to meet me for lunch? And I went, sure. And we've been, we met for lunch for years. And then she took a job, darn it. And I don't get to see her as often as I do, but we all still keep in close contact. So anyway, that's on. And Ricky has been a fantastic supporter of my book. I mean, just like the other girls. I mean, I don't know how many copies Ricky's bought, how many people she's given it to. Her kindness is unbelievable. And she's a real supporter. And I love those kind of people. They're my favorite. And all my girlfriends have that thread that goes through them. They're all super supportive people. And I love that in people. So anyway, Ricky, on to you, girl. Well, it's so easy to support something and someone that you love, you know, and, and it's instant love, right? With Kathy, yeah. um, you talk about you. her book. Well, she's the open book, you know, essentially I see Kathy as an invitation you know, and, and her book is an invitation. Um, not only did I love and enjoy the first book, but as soon as this second book came out on, on uh, uh, the ebook, I got it and read it right away too, um, you know, and just devoured it. Um, so much new and, and great content in this second version. And there had been a number of years past between the time that I first read the book and hosted the book club and, uh, you know, worked that through our neighborhood and friend group and met so many more of, of Kathy's friends that way. Uh, and then life changes, right? And you have new adversities and obstacles and challenges that you face in your life. And so the timing of the release of this second book was perfect for me. And I so needed that. Uh, you know, so I just, I see it as an invitation, you know, this book and, and Kathy herself, you know, to share this fantastic journey called life uh, together and just to recognize that we stand shoulder to shoulder with each other and one another um, and that we soldier on and that together we can surmount any obstacle and any adversity that's placed before us. And that's all through faith. So all the things that underlie that faith, you know, the hope and the trust and the confidence that that brings and secures. Um, I think that phrase, stay in the day, if no one has mentioned it yet, you know, is such um, a, a predominant part of my life on the, on the struggles that we face or the days that are tough. So I just, I just love Kathy. I love the book and I would do anything to share and support the message. Well, you know, it was funny, Sandy and Amy, because um, why kind of the girlfriends had all got together. And of course, it happened to be the exact day that we got together, the book became a bestseller. And it was amazing that we were all together. And I looked at my phone, I went to get my bestseller. <laughs> so anyway, we were all excited. But I said to everybody, don't, don't, don't everybody read the ebook. Wait till the, wait till the paperback comes out. And everybody said, oh, you, you want us to wait? I said, yeah, don't, don't, you bought the ebook, but don't, just wait till it comes out. And so we all agreed on that. Then the next time we met, we all got together. And so Ricky, said, Ricky said, I, I'm so exhausted today. It was, and it was just like a little while <laughs> later. And we said, well, what happened? She said, I got your ebook. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't wait. And she goes to work very early. And she said, I, I couldn't wait. She said, and I started the ebook. And she said, I stayed up till 4 a.m. reading the book. And I think you had to go to work at like seven. And Holly went, Holly, my friend Holly went, you stayed up till four. She said, I couldn't stop. I had to go through the whole <laughs> thing. So anyway, that's those that's those are those great friendships that are so supportive and loving and caring and but I, I do have to them. say I do have to say one more thing and, and I, I never want to interrupt Kathy um, because I love her voice so much but I can wait for the movie but I cannot wait for the audiobook so yeah. this audible book must be made and and I uh, urge all of you to to pray about that and and to help see that to fruition um, I, I don't believe that there's another book that I would rather have in the voice of this inimitable author. Thank that you. sounds Thank like you. a great Thank plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'll go to my next friend who is Christy, who I met along this journey. And she has been another 
fabulous supporter of miracles. And Christy is also a survivor. And she started her own breast cancer group, Journey to Wholeness. It's wonderful. Christy is also a teacher. She's got a million ideas, a million things to put into, you know, it make her group so interesting. And um, Christy and I kind of did that too. We kind of fell in love too, didn't we, Christy? Mm -hmm. We did. It's so funny. Um, yes, it's actually this week that I celebrated 12 years as a breast cancer survivor. So this is, and this is happens to be National Cancer Awareness Month as well, Kathy. So this is like the perfect time to have this um, launch. So Kathy and I met a little over two years ago. And as I was starting my Facebook group, um, Journey to Wholeness, I would go into other breast cancer survivor groups and, and like recruit people. I wanted to invite them to my group. And every group I went into, every group I went into, Kathy's name would pop up. Like if I would friend request someone who's a mutual friend, Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. And I'm like, who is this Kathy Davis? <coughs> so I did a little bit Facebook stalking. We've all done it and checked out who she was. And I thought I have to get to know this lady. So I private messaged her and just kind of introduced her myself and said, you know, I'd love to chat with you. And um, I didn't hear back at first. And then I, I messaged her again and I heard back from her and I said, could we chat sometime? And she said, of course. And we got on the phone one Sunday night and we talked for two hours. We were up and I was up till like one in the morning and I too am an early person and I had to get up and go to work the next day. But I was so excited to finally meet and talk to her over the phone. And over the course of a few weeks after that, you know, we decided um, I wanted to have her, I wanted to interview her in my Facebook group. And we decided this was like February or March. And she said, well, let's wait till June because then I'll be celebrating. I think it was 21 years at the time Yes. and you can come down. And I'm like, that is awesome. She invited me to come and spend the night at her house. And you know, we started making all of our plans and she would go into the group and, you know, meet the ladies and chat with them. And so it, June came around and, um, I drove to Virginia. I was, I'll never forget. I was driving to Virginia and I was talking to my mom on the phone and I was so excited. And I said, mom, I'm going to stay with my friend, Kathy. And she's like, have you met her? I'm like, no, not in person. She's like, well, she might be like a serial killer or something. <laughs> <laughs> So I, that, we got a good laugh out of that. So I, we went, I got to her house and um, we took pictures together and then went out to dinner and then came back and did our Facebook live together. And I will tell you that the women in the group were just so inspired by Kathy's story. And, you know, they all had read her book by that point. And we had, I, I was just looking back on the, the interview last night, Kathy, and there were Me over too over 300 comments on that one video yes and yes. the ladies in the group were inspired and we decided after that interview that the our motto for the group would be stay in the day because that's, that's right. what resonated with all the ladies in the group i know someone had mentioned that earlier and you know in the over the last two years i know that kathy has inspired so many women in that group and we lost a couple of them and Kathy was close to them as well. And I know one of them, Kathy, I know you made a huge difference in her life, even Thank to you. the end. Um, so she is not only writing the book, but living it and inspiring all of these women. I don't like to get emotional here. <laughs> um, but she really is making a difference in the breast cancer community. And they, you know, they don't just know her as the author, they know her as a friend and a confidant and I know that, you know, we have a small messenger group and we pray for each other and Kathy's in that group and she really does live out what she says. And um, so I'm just so grateful for our friendship and um, look forward to coming to spend the night again. And Joanna, I have, I take your room every time, just so you know, I'm the other, <laughs> the other sister. <laughs> um, so I just appreciate your friendship and all that you're doing. And I will be playing you at, in, the, in your 50s in the movie, just so you know. <laughs> there you go, Christy. Perfect. <laughs> um, and and um, Amy, I am a teacher and I love the real names. I've used that in my Facebook groups and 
Um, so I'm all about the, the base, the wheel of names. All right, I am not alone in the amusement. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, so, you I use that awesome. exact one. <laughs> um, you're, still, you're still a nerd, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 okay. My nerd flag did not come out hard this time, but when we did the one for Spark and we were talking Comic Cons, y'all don't don't act like you didn't even know me, okay? Because that was that was bad. Like it was just even Sandy was like, Amy, no, don't do that. So I'm just saying. I can, you know, whatever. You guys, We're all family, okay? You guys are Amy all shows family. up as Captain Marvel at all of the local cons that we have around here. I love it. <laughs> it's so much fun. I mean, that's not as inspiring as Kathy and her book. I mean, that she's the like real inspiration. I just dress up as Captain Marvel, but you know, it's I'm not. I'm trying to be in the same par as you, Kathy. I'm there. You go, Amy. It, keep trying. Keep trying. <laughs> I'm getting there. How about Alice? Have you seen that? Do you see Alice down here at the bottom? No, I haven't seen her. Mm -hmm. Alice is Alice. Uh, yes, Alice we have one more. We have one more. Christy, thank you so much. Yeah. No, I thank oh. you for having me tonight. I am yes. honored to be here. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, yes, and I'm so thrilled. This is my very dear friend, Alice. You know, Alice, it's the hardest thing for me because Alice, you know, she had the um she had cataracts and she had them taken off. So she doesn't wear glasses anymore. And <laughs> Alice and I were in the Philippines together. And um, it was so, I mean, it was another meant to be. I was on the, this, we were going to the Philippines and um, we were on this huge plane, the Flying Tigers. I was pregnant with Joanna and we were walking down, it was very slow getting on there. It was a huge military aircraft. And I got up to, you know, Alice's aisle um, and her husband is a lawyer. He was going to be the lawyer to the, to the Admiral. And we got up there together and Alice looked at me, she'd had a new baby and I was pregnant and she said, Oh, when do you do? And I, I told her and um, she said, and she said, Oh my goodness, that's great. Well, we were going to the space. I mean, it, 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 it was huge. I mean, tens of thousands of people there. And so she said, oh, I hope I get to see you again. I said, I hope I, we had no addresses. We had no numbers. There was no cell phones then. I said, I know, I hope I get to see you too. So anyway, it was but a few days later that I went to this restaurant. It was called the Chuck Wagon. My kids will remember that. We lived near it. And uh, we went in there and sure enough, there was Alice and her daughter was my son Merritt's age. And then she had this baby who was a, who was a boy. And, um, and I was pregnant for Joanna and I had Blake with me. So anyway, um, we became instant, great, great friends. And that's how it stayed for three years. And it never changed. And Alice was in the huge group, the huge friendship group that we had. We made, we made trips to Hong Kong together. We've traveled everywhere. And I have so loved her. And when oh, I went cool. through breast cancer, she was just so awesome and there for me all the time, just like all the people that else that were on the ride with me. So I love you, Al. And that is my introduction. Whenever I go home, to my, my sister can attest to this. Whenever I go home, I always get together with Alice in Rhode Island. She lives in Newport, right near Newport. So anyway, we have missed each other due to this COVID, crazy COVID situation, but hopefully that will change. But anyway, this is my dear friend, Alice, and thank you for all you've done too, Al. You've been so supportive and I love you. Well, Kathy is my very, very dearest friend in all the world. And she has this wonderful gift of being a dear friend to so, so many people, making so many people feel special. Um, I told Kathy quite some time ago that that I just felt this name that well this descriptive name for her came to me. She is an earth guide. She is someone who is here, who was placed here to help others along the way. And she is. She's just such a, a helpful, positive person. Um, every time we get together, it's like, you know, we just it's only been a day since we saw each other or something. And um, I just, those are the best, most precious times. 
um, that we do. I've always considered her my um, another sister. And um, she has been an inspiration and a hero to me. And I just um, love her dearly. And I know everything in the book that she went through. And, um, you know, it's just all, it's just all true. I think that um, I was thinking about it, and I don't think that um, I would be have been as brave as you, Cass. I think that when they said that um, I'd that I was their first cured, I think that I would have really had to think: Would I continue to go through all that you went through? You know, I, you know, that's that is really amazing that you did that that you persevered and continued on with that. Um, so, so you're my hero. Oh, I love you. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. It sounds like you're a lot of people's hero, Kathy. So, oh. um, yay. So that's great. Thank you, so, Sandy. So Amy, uh, we have some other gifts to give out. Is that what we have left? We do. So we have an autographed copy of, of Kathy's book. But we also have a jewelry ensemble, which Kathy, I want you to talk a little bit about because you were very excited when you mentioned this to me and I have research to learn to learn about it. So I would love for you to mention that one and then we'll we'll give the jewelry ensemble away. Well, I love I, I, I love jewelry, as you can see. And I love Spartina jewelry. It's one of my favorites. And, um, you know, I, I actually found it. They have a boutique up in my sister's uh, where my sister lives in, in, in Cape Cod. And they have, you know, they always have, would have Spartina jewelry. And I said, this jewelry is so beautiful. And then my daughter-in-law, uh, Carrie and my son always go to Hilton Head on their vacations. And they talked us into doing it too. And when I went down there, there was the Spartina place. So, and of course my daughter-in-law has given me Spartina. Al, I think you gave me a beautiful Spartina bag. I mean, I, I, I love Spartina. So this is the, the really, pretty. I don't know if you can see it all that well. It is a um, it is a jewelry ensemble by Spartina. And I wanted to give that away tonight to someone who is listening, who um, will enjoy this. So that's this is this on jewelry ensemble I'm giving away tonight. It is beautiful. I it wish I could beautiful. My name. It's one of those like, you know, there's positives about being the host of this event, but one of the <laughs> negatives is I don't get to enter to win any of this stuff, you know? I bet, my I bet my name's not in there either. No, I put your name in there, Sandy. Oh, my name is in there. Yes, I put it in there. I am oh, the you, Amy. <laughs> there you go, Sandy. <laughs> yeah, so let's see who wins it. I am actually super excited. Look, Greg Kelly. Oh my gosh. He give it to his wife. Oh, lovely. Nice. Greg is so deserving of that. He's just been working really extra hard. And he's also going through, um, he's currently going through chemo for colorectal cancer. So um, oh, wow. he's definitely it's going his, through a lot. So. It is his third time, I believe. Whoa. Yes. So but we love Greg. Let's do the final giveaway, Kathy, for the sure. final autographed copy. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to buy the book, Kathy. I'm going to send it to your house. I need you to sign it and then send there you it go. back. Okay? <laughs> send it back. But look, Anna. All right. So Greg won the jewelry for his wife and then Anna won an autographed copy. That's going to be cool because she is, okay, so quick story on Anna because I know her. She's my sister. Um, but she's a, she's a she's PA. my sister. Perfect. I know she's a PA in the in the ER, and so I know that she could, you know, she loves books like this. I know that she'll read it and she can help kind of spread it. So I'm really actually very excited that she won a copy of your book because she's gonna love it. So hope so you'll have to make a trip to Texas, um, um, Kathy, and we'll have to have something. Have you bring some books down here and have an event for you? I will do it, Sandy. You know I will. Come on down, you know, we, <laughs> Texans will love you. We love everybody. Come on down. As long as they have barbecue, I'm there. As long as they have barbecue, we'll be there. <laughs> but you might want to wait till after the summer because we're yeah. going oh, yeah, to do our heaviest yeah. 
yeah. months right now. I don't know if it's really that much better. We don't get winters, so I really don't know <laughs> if it's much better in the winter time. But you know, hey, it's not going to be well, 110 out. So, it'll so be we have two seasons in Texas: summer and not summer. Yeah, it's hot <laughs> and hot. George and I have been yeah. there many times, haven't we, honey? And it's hot. It is yeah. hot. It, it is, is hot. Awesome but hot. I do like Texas. Yeah, we do too. We do too. So, Amy, anything else? I'm turning it back over to you. You're the <laughs> boss tonight. Welcome back. No, Kathy, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for letting me meet your family and your friends and just hear the impact that your, your book has made. And it is 99 cents now through, I believe, Monday. Kathy, is that right? Yes, through Monday. Yes. And so go and get your copy and get, you know, the physical hardback of the book to share because there's this, it's a great message to share with everyone and everyone needs to have it. But I mean, Kathy, this has been so much fun for me. I finally got to see you in person. We've talked on the phone all the time. I feel yes. like I know you, you know, this is, this is great. And I'm, I'm just so grateful and excited that you've impacted everyone's life on here. And I'm just honored to be a part of it. So thanks for including me and Sandy and, and helping with your book. Absolutely, Kathy. It's been great getting to know you a little bit and we look forward to even more. I just want to thank everybody here today. I want to thank my husband who has stood by me through everything. My three children who I adore, their wives who I love, my grandchildren, my, um, my sister, my cousins, my wonderful friends, my niece. I am a blessed woman. I've been blessed in so many ways. Thank you all. My love thank to you, you all. We love you, Kathy. Did you want to take a picture? Congratulations, Ma. Yes. We love you. Thank you. Kathy, love you, Joe. Congratulations. Kathy, Thank did you, you want to take a screenshot of everybody? Yes, that'd be great. Could you do that, so, Christine? Holding up your book. Oh, wait, I have to get my book.